morning. We're back with Robbie Shapiro, a 16-year Wells Fargo veteran who's been helping small businesses uh, get loans and get off the ground at Wells Fargo. How does first of all tell us how that works and why a small business loan is helpful? First of all, oh, happy the, to. The easy stuff first. Yeah, you know, small business owners—they're so brave, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, we're so glad that they are, aren't they? Because uh, most people, in fact, the vast majority of people, work for small businesses, mm -hmm. and so you know, oftentimes, hopefully, they come in with a great idea and some funding, but that's not always the case. And so banks, financial institutions like Wells Fargo, but also micro lenders are just so important to help them get that first building, that first set of materials, hire their first employee, and uh, that's where we come in. Awesome. It's the lifeblood of our economy. Totally agree. You know, it really, really is. And there's a perception out there that banks aren't lending mm -hmm. to small businesses. So what can small businesses do to become more lendable and more attractive to 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 the banks. Well, I'm so glad I'm here because yeah. uh, I love to talk exactly on that topic. And we're so proud because at Wells Fargo, we are the number one small business lender in New Mexico. And if I could just break it down into a couple tips for any small business, uh, these are my couple tips. The first is, is don't be intimidated. Come in mm. early and often. Okay. So don't be afraid to come right in and meet a great banker. And even if you don't feel totally prepared, that's what their job is. To get you prepared. Exactly. To get you even started on the path to take. There's exactly. going to be a series of steps you're going to need to go. and So they're kind of like a counselor. Yeah, absolutely so there. if I wanted to hypothetically buy the Clippers. <laughs> <laughs> you and Oprah. You yeah, and Oprah. We're going to put you up so against the, her. The first ready. step would be what? Yeah the, credit first, check. yeah, the first step is pull your own credit. Okay. And uh, that way you go in knowing exactly what your, your situation looks like today. And there's no surprises. Uh, your banker is going to pull your credit too as you go into an application. But, you know, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And it also shouldn't be intimidating. It's okay to say, I had this thing happen. Can you help me with it? Can you help me clear this up? And that's actually the sign of a good banker when they don't, when they don't just say, here's our program. But mm -hmm. they say, let me see how I can help you in the long term as well. Because it, nothing has to last forever. Nothing is permanent, no matter how bad your situation is. You, you can always come up. You can always come out of that. Absolutely. It's just knowing the steps to take. Exactly. Yes. And with a small bank, there are, you guys have programs at Wells Fargo for small businesses. Mm -hmm. And then there are SBA programs. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the SBA Small Business Week begins May 12th. And that's a big deal here, and that's where we celebrate all these great small businesses. But the SBA has programs, and you have programs. If you could tell us a little bit about some of those and how they can help small businesses either get funding, get grants. There's a bunch of different things out there, and I don't think people realize there's help. There's a lot of help if you have a great idea for small business. There's a lot of help. That's and, awesome. you know, the best thing about it is the SBA is becoming so automatic. So with a lender like Wells Fargo, when you come in, you're actually automatically considered for SBA lending. So when you put in a standard right application, bat. right off the bat, that's awesome. We take your application and we say, do you qualify for SBA? Can we, if we couldn't get you approved without, can we get you approved with SBA? You actually don't have to do anything now if you're a very small, like micro business, which are most small businesses. You and know, that's one or two person businesses, maybe a home office business, that kind of thing. No, it's even larger businesses. So businesses that are 20, 30 employees. When you're less than that two million a year in revenue mark, mm. uh, the SBA really tries to reach their arms around you through yeah. banks like Wells Fargo to say. You don't have to know the tricks of the trade. Just come in, put in an application, find a great bank. Because you're paid to know the tricks of the yeah, trade. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what we're. That's what we're for. Exactly. Yeah, I love resources too, like the small business development centers. I know I'm sure you're familiar with those, Absolutely. but you know, if a small business isn't, there are these organizations that the universities put on. They're all across uh, New Mexico. There's several of them here in Albuquerque, and all they do is help you know the internal stuff. They'll sit down with you, build your plan, so you can feel even more confident going in your first time or your second time or your hundredth time meeting mm -hmm. with your banker. And those, those centers are all over. CNM has one. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce has one. Uh, they're all over the city, and you can pop in like your neighborhood small business development center. And even if you're a small business that's been going for a while, yep. uh -huh. they can help you get going. And that's another Great. part of this, too. You can also do loans for expanding your small business. Am I right? You got it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, one of our favorite things to lend is uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you're buying a fridge for your restaurant, you think, I'm going to go to Home Depot and buy my fridge, no. and I only have one form of lending. And it, that's, that's so not true. You have lots of forms of lending, uh, even if it's a vehicle for your business. You know, one of mm -hmm. my favorite uh, best practices for a business is simply to separate my consumer from my business. So that way, when I apply for my mortgage, all the lending I've done on my business side doesn't hurt me to go get a mortgage. As a personal person rather yeah. than... A, so yeah. don't use exactly. your personal finances and your personal credit 
to build your business, to keep it separate. Separate them as quickly as you can mm -hmm. for tax purposes, but also to help your business be more lendable and mm -hmm. for you as a person to be more lendable. That's exactly the meat, the negative what I was looking <laughs> oh, for. Oh, I gave it to you, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> and then here's another little t takeaway that I want our viewers to go away with. Awesome. How can a banker help a business attract more customers? Uh, I love this topic. So if you're a great banker, one of the best things you serve your customers is more customers. And so some of that is connections, like the small business development centers who meet lots of other business owners, but bankers meet lots of other business owners. So imagine that you're a restaurant, and now you, because we're just talking about there's great stuff happening downtown with the rail yard, and there's food truck organizations, and bankers know those organizations because we bank them. So that's one easy way is you should ask your banker, who are other businesses that you know that could help me? And you guys are also Great. also out at every networking event. Oh my as gosh. Well. So you yeah. get, and you can point your people you bank with to people other people at these networking events all around. Great. You got it. Yes. Let me share one more if I may. Sure, please. Uh, we do uh, credit and debit card processing. We call it merchant services. And when you sign up for merchant services uh, with a bank like Wells Fargo, you get a set of free gift cards. You know, just to get you started. So here's a hundred free gift cards, Amber, for you and your business. You mean like the little ones the you use for coffee. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Load and reload. Yeah. It's great for a business owner because you can load them with whatever you want. Let's say $5 a piece for the coffee shop that Amber's opening. Nice. And instead of giving me a $5 coupon at an event or if you're at a neighborhood association meeting, you load up all those gift cards with $5 each, our customers really think that has inherent value. Mm -hmm. So versus a coupon, it's a gift card, they're so much more likely to come uh -huh. in and the bank gave you those 100 for free. How cool. So it's an easy and free marketing uh, idea, and at most, it's gonna cost you $5 off your merchandise for the ones that come back in. That's brilliant. And we all keep those little cards in our wallet. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Oh, I saved them. I actually have them in a directory. I'm a little OCD, <laughs> but I, but I have them organized by, OCD, yeah, by uh, <laughs> I'm a banker at heart. You know, one of the things that we've been writing about at Business First is all of the crazy new banking regulations. Mm -hmm. Are they really affecting how small business lending is in small business credit, or is it something that small businesses don't have to worry about. Yeah, it's to a degree. You know, some of it is is how we collect information. And, uh, you know, so one thing I would always suggest is when somebody asks you a piece of information about you, Dan, mm -hmm. for your identification, um, give it willingly. Because believe me, you don't want us giving your money to anybody else, right? <laughs> But, you know, from the, hopefully it's pretty much seamless. You know, we worry about the other banks in the community. You know, we, we really rely on each other. Uh, small community banks and banks like Wells Fargo, we work so well in concert. Mm -hmm. And so there is lots that we go through, but we hope that from the customer's perspective, it's completely invisible. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. But so the, in, how has credit actually been for small businesses? Is there money actually out there to lend? I know that was a big issue, mm -hmm. you know, as the recession hit. There just mm -hmm. wasn't any money at banks to, to lend to a lot of small businesses. Now that's loosening up quite a bit, am I right? Absolutely. Yeah, we are looking for lendable small businesses. And so what that means is, is like I shared earlier, be brave to come in and ask for funds. One of the keys to being lendable, and this works on the personal side and the business, is asking for money when you don't need it today. So the best time to get a line of credit is not when you need it, but when, you are, when your business is thriving. Because then it's there before you ever need it, and your financial picture is the clearest when things are going well. Thinking ahead. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So I should have been thinking about buying the Clippers months ago. You really should have. <laughs> In fact, I would have loved to have started a savings account for you, you know, maybe 10 years ago, so you could put a down payment on those Clippers. That would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. <laughs> I think... The, Go ahead, Dan. Oh, I'm sorry. And you know, we have Michaela on, who's talking about startups. Mm -hmm. And so what's the best way to contact you about a startup and somebody who's just, just getting started in this whole process. What's the best way to go about getting a line of credit? Awesome. So, you know, we've got 34 locations across Albuquerque. So the best thing is go in and find a person that is passionate about your business. That is the sign of a good banker, is if they listen and they really say, Amber, that is an incredible idea and I want to know more. Mm -hmm. The more they learn about you, that's the sign of a great banker. And then just knowing the other resources. So do I visit a small business development center along with my banker? Hopefully our bankers direct you there. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, for that startup business, mm -hmm. oftentimes we involve a micro lender, uh, like Oxion or West or the Loan Fund, you know, because we work so well in concert to say, you can't get the line of credit that you were hoping for yet, but we can help you through Axion or through West or through the Loan Fund get some of those startup dollars, and then we are going to stay with you the whole time. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. I love Even it. if you don't have the money, you know who does have the money. Absolutely. Exactly. It's perfect. That's I our job. That. Robert Shapira, that. thank you so much for your insight. Your expertise is very, very valuable and encouraging for all of us out here that are trying to make it with our businesses. Oh, my pleasure. We've yes. got a lot more coming up on the morning brew after the break. Don't go away. Including chihuahuas. Chihuahuas.